There was the Van Giesen Lixivation Works, which was built on Henson Creek in Lake City. And the third and final smelting facility in Lake City was the Ocean Wave, which was located on the northern boundary of Lake City using water power from the Lake Fork River. A dam was built uh, that transported that water to run the mine machinery in the Ocean Wave Mill, which would be located where we today think of the country store on the northern edge of town. Probably a pretty polluting uh, facility, as all those uh, smelters were, dumping their effluent right back into the Lake Fork River. Uh, the uh, Ocean Wave had its start in 1877, cost about $40,000 to build a big facility. They talked the Lake City government out of a number of entire blocks of lots and had the mill on one portion of that land. They had a big boarding house. They had a bridge that went across the river that was known as the Ocean Wave Bridge uh, and had big plans to enlarge. Uh, unfortunately, it never really materialized. The ore that they used at the Ocean Wave Mill, as you might guess, came from the Ocean Wave Mine, which is located on he Upper Henson Creek below Capital City. Uh, ore from that mine was laboriously transported down Henson Creek to Lake City and then processed. And like the Crook Smelter, once it was processed into a uh, uh, travelable form, it was taken over Slumgullion and Spring Creek passes to the smelting facilities uh, by railroad that were available at that point. Uh, the Ocean Wave smelter was probably defunct by about 1880, so for an investment of approximately 40 grand, it only operated for three years. The uh, Ocean Wave mill building survived until the early uh, 20th century and there were periodic revivals when they thought that there was a new method of smelting which could be introduced in that same old building. Uh, it was finally torn and bur burned down and doesn't exist today. One of the remnants of the Ocean Wave smelter was the Ocean Wave Bridge, which was a railroad-like heavy timber bridge across the Lake Fork with a drop of perhaps 30 or 40 feet down to the river. Uh, it was right below where the dam was that diverted water to the mill. The Ocean Wave Bridge is perhaps best known as the Hanging Bridge. Uh, it had two uprights that were over the running surface, and uh, in April of 1882, uh, George Betts and James Browning, who were dance hall riffraff on South Bluff Street, uh, killed Sheriff Edward N. Campbell. That happened in the Draper Mansion. He was shot. Betts and Browning were immediately apprehended, taken to jail in Lake City, and a court date uh, scheduled. Uh, the citizenry of Lake City, however, was outraged and decided they would take law and order into their own hands. On a moonlit night in late April of 1882, a lynch mob marched silently up Gunnison Avenue they were masked, they carried sledgehammers and crowbars, they went to the jail, they overpowered the guards, they uh, wrenched the doors of the cell open where Betts and Browning were being held and hauled them out. They put rose, uh, rope nooses over their necks and dragged them kicking and screaming down Gunnison Avenue to the Ocean Wave Bridge. Uh, ropes were thrown over the uprights over that bridge. Uh, they were asked if they had any last words. Uh, George Betts cussed the crowd and asked for a chew of tobacco. James Browning, who was only in his uh, 20s at this point, he was probably an instance of being at the wrong place with the wrong person at the wrong time. He was crying by this point, begging for his life, and finally, as a last resort, asked the crowd never to let his mother know the manner of his death. With that, the ropes uh, were raised. Those men were kicking in the air. Betts uh, supposedly cursed the crowd and said that anyone who ever drank the water in Lake City would have a misfortune in the coming years. Browning was able to get his hands untied from behind his back 
and was able to grab onto the rope and try to keep that noose from tightening around his neck. A man in the crowd standing on the bridge below him repeatedly hit that hand with his cane until the hand tired and Browning slowly slid down the rope. And that was the end of both Betts and Browning. The next day, the Lake City schools were dismissed and taken to the Ocean Wave Bridge to see those two silently swinging bodies in the breeze uh, as a uh, evidence of what happens to wrongdoers in uh, Lake City. Here we see where the tracks enter Lake City over bridge 349.97, a 512-foot, 27-panel OD pile trussel. In 1889, they did complete the 36-mile line from Sapanero into Lake City. And Lake City finally got a railroad, and that made a big difference in hauling out uh, hay and cows and ore and lumber and items like that. But unfortunately, the uh, boom was pretty much over in Lake City, and the Silver Crash of 1893 put an end to what had been a promising mining camp.